rolling up our sleeves and governing. And here's a lesson to take from last night. Look, why do the Democrats do better than expected? Because for two years, they've governed as liberals. They've governed as whacked out lefty nut jobs. And you know what that did? That excited their base. That excited a bunch of young voters that came out in massive numbers because when you actually stand for something, your base gets excited. There's a lesson for Republicans to learn, which is when we have a majority next year, we damn well better act like it and use it. Now, look, I'm not saying that I'm deriving joy from the misfortune of someone like Ted Cruz, but yeah, no, that's exactly what I'm saying. Here, Ted Cruz is engaging in arguably the least self-aware postmortem after Republicans failed to conjure up anything close to the promised red wave that they'd spent the last few weeks filleting themselves over. So let's jump into a little bit of what Ted is saying here. Now, he starts off by saying that Democrats won only because they governed as liberals, as whacked out left-wing nutjobs. Now, first of all, I think the point that Cruz is trying to convey here underneath the oozing partisan hackery is that when you govern in a way that helps people, people will reward you. That concept might be unfamiliar to Republicans, because they don't actually have any policies, and so there's nothing for the voters to reward. Republicans run on nothing but fear porn, and while it works pretty effectively in terms of scaring the shit out of people, those people aren't actually better off by keeping those Republicans in office. There aren't any noticeable benefits because Republicans don't offer any noticeable benefits. They just scream about pronouns and fake litter boxes and classrooms and fentanyl and Halloween candy. At some point, people are going to realize that paying lawmakers and senators hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to scare you about things that don't exist probably isn't worth the money. Especially considering, on the flip side, that when Democrats are in charge, things do change. They do make good on their promises. In just two years, with the thinnest of majorities, Democrats made sure that all COVID tests and vaccines were completely free. They passed funding for the first upgrade of our infrastructure in our lifetimes. They began the process of EV charging stations across the United States. They passed the biggest climate investment in the history of the world and passed the CHIPS Act, both of which, together, resulted in an avalanche of companies announcing investments in the United States, including Toyota, for Solar, Sparks, Corning, LG, Honda, Micron, Qualcomm, and Intel, just to name a few. That means fewer supply chain disruptions, fewer supply costs, lower product prices, and more jobs. Democrats got the government to negotiate lower drug prices. They capped out-of-pocket costs for seniors at $2,000 a year and insulin costs for Medicare recipients at $35 a month. Democrats forgave student loan debt for 43 million American borrowers. Democrats got the first gun safety bill passed in three decades that'll keep guns out of the hands of domestic abusers, fund red flag laws in the states, and expand background checks for those between 18 and 20 years old. Democrats pardoned federal marijuana convictions and started the process of removing cannabis as a Schedule One drug. Those are all tangible benefits for Americans. All of those things help us. All of those things are popular. They were what Democrats ran on. And without a single vote to spare, they got those things done. That's why people voted for Democrats, because those elected officials actually showed that keeping them in power was worth it. And granted, Ted Cruz pretends that Biden and the Democrats were pandering to the far left. Of that list of legislative wins that I just ran through, which of those are far left? Which of those are meant to coddle the communist forces of the Democratic Party? We're talking about making healthcare affordable for seniors. Is that for leftists? We're talking about investing in renewable energy and bringing in hundreds of thousands of new jobs and investments into this country. Is that for the leftists? We're talking about upgrading our nation's crumbling infrastructure. Is that for leftists? These people like to rail against the far left, and yet when they're asked to cite any specific examples of democratic policies that pander to the extreme of our party, they can't. All they do is yell about vague leftist policies that sound scary, but don't actually exist. So my challenge to Ted Cruz would be asking him, why not actually name those spooky policies instead of wailing about socialism on TV? But here's the best part. Cruz says this. When you actually stand for something, your base gets excited. That when you actually stand for something, your base gets excited. And I'm not sure if Ted Cruz did this by accident or on purpose, but what he's effectively saying is that Republicans don't actually stand for anything. And he's half right, so long as you don't count tax cuts for millionaires and billionaires, because they certainly stand for those. But otherwise, the Republican Party doesn't actually stand for anything. They claim to be the party of family values, and yet they've lined up behind Donald Trump, a guy who's paid God knows how much money for hush money payouts for affairs. Is that family values? They claim to be the party of fiscal responsibility, and yet the last time that Republicans controlled the government during the Trump era, they added $7.8 trillion to the debt and passed a tax cut that dried up all federal revenues when we needed the most during the pandemic. Is that fiscally responsible? 
They claim to be pro-military and yet refuse to vote for the PACT Act, which would give health care to sick American veterans because they were salty that Joe Manchin allowed the Democrats to pass the Inflation Reduction Act. Is that pro-military? They've claimed to be pro-police and yet did nothing as the Capitol Police were being assaulted by the mob who was attacking the Capitol on January 6th. Is that pro-police? They claim to be pro-states rights and yet they all signed on to the Texas lawsuit seeking to overturn the election results in four other states because they weren't happy with the outcome come back in 2020. Is that pro-states rights? So when Ted Cruz says that the Republican Party stands for nothing, this is one of those moments where he's actually being pretty honest. Of course, the irony here is that Ted Cruz is among the biggest offenders. He helped validate the events of January 6th by objecting to the election results, even though they were perfectly fair. He voted for the $1.9 trillion tax cut that dried up federal revenues to give a tax cut to millionaires and billionaires. He traffics in fear porn on a nightly basis on Fox to whip up the base. So let's be perfectly honest here. If Ted Cruz is looking for the culprit as far as the total lack of any steadfast principles is concerned on the right, he doesn't have to look too far. Also, one final note here. Ted Cruz is making it seem as if he's sweeping in to diagnose all of the party's problems like some neutral arbiter here. The guy was on the front lines, showing up on TV, campaigning for candidates during this entire midterm process. Here he is just a few days before the election. Listen, I am very, very optimistic. I, I think on election day, we're not just gonna see a red wave, we're gonna see a red tsunami. I believe Republicans are gonna retake both the House and Senate. I think in the House, we're going to see big, big majorities, 30, 40, 50 seats, I think the order of magnitude of 2010. In the Senate, I think we're likely to end up at 53 or 54 Republicans. I think the most likely pickup in the country is Adam Laxalt in Nevada. I think he's going to make a terrific new senator. I think Herschel Walker is going to win in Georgia. I've been, I'm in the middle right now of a nationwide 17-state month-long bus tour. So I've been campaigning with these guys all over the country. I was with Herschel uh, in Georgia last week. I was with Adam a couple of weeks before that. I was with J.D. Vance last week. I think J.D.'s going to win. I think Dr. Oz is going to win uh, in Pennsylvania. I think we're going to have some big, big victories. And I also think Arizona, Blake Masters, and New Hampshire, General Bulldog, both have a real shot at winning those races. And I think we have a puncher's chance in Colorado and in Washington state as well. So, I mean, I, I think this is going to be a big, big historic election. In other words, he was the Republican Party's campaign. So I get that he wants to showcase himself now as the guy with all the answers, but if you're looking for what failed on the campaign trail for Republicans, it was quite literally Ted Cruz. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.